Hi, everyone. We are back. Welcome back to the summit. We're very excited to host um, our final panel discussion of the day from student gamer to career. Um, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, Sarah Reed from Intel has been really critical on the Intel side for making Intel Inspires in the summit happen. So I wanted to give her an introduction as my program counterpart. She's the esports program manager at Intel and leads some of Intel's largest esports initiatives. She's been a huge supporter of Intel Inspires and student gaming. So um, couldn't have done this event without her effort. Um, you know, as we said, a, a key goal of Intel Inspires is to have the most positive impact on the students. So what better way than to bring the students in um, and have them share their perspective with um, the audience in terms of how they've gone from student gamer into career, what they've learned and what they would advise. So it's with huge pleasure that I welcome Sierra to the panel. Thank you so much, Natalie, and thank you everybody uh, for being here with us today. I know this is the last session of the day, so we really appreciate you uh, sticking with us. Um, I am really honored actually to be joined by Carl, Michael, and Brandon. Um, I didn't enter the esports industry or really the gaming industry until I had already graduated and come in um, and started my career. So I'm really excited to hear from them uh, and learn a little bit more about how their careers actually started back in high school or in college by being involved with esports programs. So with that, um, Brandon, why don't we go ahead and start with you, but if you could each kind of really quickly talk us through your story, how did you get into yep. esports um, in the first place? What did that look like for you either in high school or in college and where is your career taking you now? Yeah, um, so my school didn't really have kind of a program. I kind of built up a club from the ground up. Um, we hosted a bunch of LAN events, grew to one of the biggest clubs in my school, um, on fun and dandy like that. And then I started working with um, Boom TV or AVGL. And then so at first they were like, hey, oh, like I've been working for free for like, you know, a few years doing all this tournament stuff. And then they're like, we'll pay you to do this. I'm like, oh, great. Um, and I got introduced to the whole production stuff, so like learning how to produce shows. Um, do, I got to do a lot of big shows with them as well, or at least I got to sit back and like observe and see how they did it, and a lot of the processes behind the scenes. And then at one point I got to run a couple shows for them, and then I started to learn more and more. And then it kind of just started rolling in. I had other shows now from like other companies, and I was l learning how to do this, and eventually rolled that into my own production studio. And so, um, yeah, really, I just kind of learned a lot from Boom and, and AVGL, and then they were the ones who allowed me to like um, turn it into a career. And so I'm like, hey, wow, there's money in this. I can, <laughs> like, I've been doing a lot of this for free. So now that it's enough money that I can make a career out of it, I, um, and this like can be the main thing I want to do. With yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much, um, Carl. Do you want to go next? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. Um, so my name is Carl Leone. I'm the esports head coach at Oakland University, uh, but I started off as a student just interested in gaming. I was recruited to Robert Morris University in 2014 um, on scholarship to be an esports athlete to play League of Legends for their team. I competed for four years under them. Towards the end of those four years, I started taking a step back from maybe competing as much as possible and trying to grind as many hours of the game as possible. I started to take a step towards maybe coaching and how can I assist the team in other ways like social media management and other ways like that. So uh, towards the end of it, when I graduated, I went ahead and started working at Aquinas College in West Michigan as their League of Legends head coach. Uh, and then when Oakland University started up their program, I went ahead and came, started the program here and, uh, We've got, uh, we're in our second year now, so I'm uh, really excited to be doing it. Great, thank you so much. And Michael, your quick introduction. Yeah. So yeah, I'm Michael. I'm also known as Slans in the esports space. Um, I kind of got my start in uh, collegiate esports and esports in general through uh, the University of Tennessee, uh, where I was the club president there uh, my junior and senior year. I also helped uh, kind of build up that club um, and as it currently exists, um, when I first got there my freshman and sophomore year. Um, so that's where I kind of started. I also uh, founded a league called Collegiate PUBG, which is no longer running. Um, but that's kind of where I got a lot of my league experience um, and player management uh, and overall esports experience. Great, thank you. Um, 
so one of the things that, you know, we kind of talked about and I know is, is pretty common is that, and one of the things we've been talking about kind of throughout the program today is really what schools and the programs that are either emerging or have been um, created can really do to help their students. So is there something as you sort of look back to your time as a student, either in high school or in college that you thought that your program did that either worked really well or since I know a few of you also mentioned that you kind of got the program started yourself, is there more that you wish the school, an administrator, a coach would have done to actually help you sort of progress the program a little bit further? Um, Michael, do you want to uh, just just continue? Yeah, I can kick that off. Um, so at the University of Tennessee, going into it, you know, I thought the school would have had, you know, a pre-established esports program, um, at least a club, at least. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, I, I realized that really didn't exist. Um, so I was kind of one of the founders of, of the club there, um, and throughout my time uh, in the leadership team of UTK Esports, we had multiple conversations with our um, administrators. Um, I also met one of my uh, good friends now, Jason Smethers, who's kind of the advisor of the esports club there now, and he's um, kind of continuing on the path of pushing uh, esports to a more varsity level um, at the school. Um, and through him and just being able to kind of talk with him as um, he was actually a first year study advisor for me, um, talking through him, um, we kind of developed a path for the club that currently exists there. Um, and, you know, just having people around the space, specifically in staff or um, leadership levels uh, really helped uh, get the program to where it is now. Yeah, definitely. And Brandon, you, I think, mentioned a little earlier, too, that you also kind of helped create a program. Is there anything from your perspective that you wish, you know, would have been done or that was done and, mm -hmm. and definitely helped make it a little bit easier? So actually, um, my district actually ended up shutting down my club at the end of the year. Um, they're still pretty, <laughs> uh, pretty against esports clubs. And recently, so I, I think last year, we got a group of like, a, like six, seven schools to try to start their own clubs as well. But then ultimately the same thing happened. Um, they got shut down by their schools for reasons against video games. Um, but one of the things we found out was that actually a lot of the schools weren't even against video games themselves. The school administrators wanted to run the program themselves. They didn't want like students doing it. Because at the time, I just got together like a bunch of friends that I knew from different schools. We were like, hey, we can start something. But they didn't like, I guess they didn't trust us to run something like that or represent the schools. And so like, okay, well maybe we'll do it, but we'll do it like another year or something. And so part of that was kind of that was kind of hurt because like it's like hey the school didn't trust us to do something that we already we've been doing we know what to do right and we, it's um and we like we're, we we want to put in the work we want to develop it but the school administrators didn't really help us out so that's part of the um, I think that's one of the things I would probably t for advice I'd probably say like trust your students because um, obviously the students are in the space they know what will help them. And then just, yeah, be there, like take their advice. And sometimes maybe they'll get like a little, like um, a little big with their ideas, but obviously work with it <laughs> and then um, see where you can go with their ideas. Yeah. And Carl, I'm going to add one more um, kind of question on for you specifically. So since you've both been in the student perspective and now being on kind of the coaching programmatic side of it, um, can you kind of add a part, part of that to your answer now that you've seen both sides of it? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Brandon was right on is empower your students to be able to run these programs uh, and these community events for you. Um, this is something that, to be honest, it's so new. Uh, we're all learning it together, right? So administrators, it might be really daunting to try and dive into esports as exciting as it is and everybody's talking about it. Uh, it's much easier if you find talented uh, students on campus who are able to run these events for you, like Brandon's mentioning, and just empower them, give them the resources that they're able to do it, set limitations in place for areas that you're concerned about, you know, sponsorships or anything like that that you're worried about. Just make sure you're very clear with them and work with them on it. Um, I, I think if you give students the resources, you'll be amazed at how much student engagement can come out of these programs because Gamers are just so excited to be around gaming events on campus and for it to be supported at the college or high school level um, is, is very, very empowering. And also, you know, one thing that you're doing, you know, at high school level or college level, whatever your goals are, it's undoubtedly to set these kids up for success when they graduate, right? 
Um, and so to be able to empower them and, and give them the experience to lead a program or start a program of their own, uh, to run esports style events, uh, it's just, you just can't put a number on that, that level of experience that they get. And it's all extracurricular. All you need to do is just kind of monitor what's going on and let them run out and learn for themselves. They're going to make mistakes, but so would you if you were running the event. So <laughs> um, from, from my point of view, from the administrative side, I would say the, the most difficult part of it right now is just having resources available to also do side events. So for me specifically, I'm under athletics. So a lot of my focus is on my team competing at the highest level, but that's just one small section of esports, college esports specifically, like we're really leaning into here is the events, right? Having a community style event where you have high school and college and just people in your entire community come and compete and have a good time. I think that's a huge untapped market that only a few schools have really dove into. And I think as we go forward, it'll be easier and easier as we, you know, universities and high schools get more and more resources towards it as the scene continues to grow. Um, but if you're on the fence about it, just go for it, you know, be an innovator and empower your students to run these events. Yeah, definitely. No, I love that. Um, you all really kind of touched on like the, the power that the students can have in kind of giving them some, some ownership. Um, so one thing that's also been sort of a theme I've noticed in a lot of the presentations we've had today is around transferable skills that come out of being involved in an esports program from a student perspective. So I was wondering if each of you can just kind of quickly touch now that you're in your careers, but having, you know, been a gamer, um, a student gamer, what do you feel like are some of those transferable skills that really helped you progress to where you're at in your career? And, you know, what can the, the audience that's listening to do today do to really make sure that they're also kind of teaching those to, back to their students? Sure, I can uh, start this one. Um, so as a student, you know, the, the whole point of going to college is to learn about everything that you possibly can. Um, and being um, the founder of e UTK Esports, um, I got to experience a lot of that. I think a lot of that is just going to events. Um, I learned a lot of stuff about lands by going to DreamHack. Um, I learned, you know, a lot about TOing um, just from, you know, trial and error running small club events um, with students participating, you know, running extra life events, um, and then also competing as a competitor, um, you know, and participating in other leagues events um, and kind of seeing how each one is different, you know, which formats work for um, each event. And then also from like a, a learning and education space, you know, I graduated with a marketing degree um, so a lot of the stuff that I was learning in school transferred into kind of how do we outreach and market, you know, our events that we're hosting um, and make them the biggest that we can. I'll go ahead and touch on it and bounce off of what you're already saying. I think everything Michael just said was correct. And on top of that, you know, the management skills is a big one. And he's referring to TO and T tournament organizer, you know, starting up and running one of these events from the ground up, that's an incredible skill right there. And for even if you're, you know, a student who's involved in that process, but not maybe the one person who's involved, you learn so much about communicating with others and developing a strategy and having worst case scenarios, uh, being able to learn on the fly, critical thinking skills. It's a lot of valuable uh, experience for these students. Um, and then I'll, I'll talk about the competitive side a little bit. If you're on a competitive team, it mirrors traditional sports. If you think about traditional sports, what are the valuable soft skills that you get out of that? Communication, being able to receive and give valuable feedback. Um, uh, with specific games, I mean, it kind of depends on which game you're talking about, but sometimes it's a matter of half of a second, you have to relay very specific information. So critical thinking is obviously something that you're very sharpening up there. And some of the communication that you're putting out has to be exact and then not flood communications is what we like to call it. But uh, it, it taught me a lot as a former player and it's teaching my students a lot as a, as a coach now. So I think uh, it can't be overlooked skill set that these players get out of the competitive aspect of it. Um, and especially those who haven't really been exposed to traditional sports, this is a skill set that they really need 
in the world once they graduate and move on. So you're, you're doing your students a service by starting up a program or helping to support one. Yeah, I want to bounce off of that as well. It's like on top of like all the behind the scenes of like tournament organizing and like management, um, for me as well, my club, we wanted to like show off the events, right? So obviously what do you do? You go to produce the events. And that's kind of where I started with the whole production stuff. I just kind of Googled, taught, learned, taught myself and kind of had to force myself to learn how to produce. People want to see better shows. Okay, I guess I'll have to look up how to do better shows. Um, I actually, I basically taught myself every part of the, um, of like the production cycle. So like all the casting talent and everything as well, observing. And I started to teach other people in my club, people who were interested. And that's kind of how you build the base there. And it's funny now, because I actually have, I've had tons of other like high school programs as well reach out to me. It's like, hey, you want to produce an event for us? And what I always tell them is don't hire someone else to produce it. Get your own students who are probably interested in the field or at least interested in technology. Teach them a little bit. Let, let them try it out. Let them see what they can do. Because it's a lot, always a lot better to get your own students, uh, get their hands on, get their hands dirty and try it out themselves. Like, sure, it'll not, it might not be the best quality, but hey, your students are learning. They're getting something out of it. And you have students at every part of the tournament. So you, you have two students playing. You have students um, managing the tournament. You have students producing the tournament. It's um it's a lot better for student engagement and then also uh, obviously transferable skills to now I get to produce shows for <laughs> lots of other companies as well and then on top of that on the production side just like just like um competing the soft skills so like communication and teamwork and all that and leadership it all rolls over to everything else you would ever want to do and so this is like pretty much like any other club where you want to um, have a leadership role you want to lead a team. It's, it's all the same. You're just changing the medium, which is now video games. Yeah, definitely. No, thank you. Um, also, all so much for that. And I do just want to throw out another reminder that if you have any questions um, for our three panelists, please drop them in the chat. Um, we do have some time at the end to go through Q&A. So if there's anything in spe specifically that you would like to ask them, please make sure to um, drop that in the chat. Um, so moving on to our next question, I, we touched on this a little bit earlier, and you all three kind of unanimously said, you know, giving um, students some power and control and listening to them. But is there any other advice that you have for school administrators or coaches on how they can really support their gaming communities that are either in development or already well established at their schools? Kyle, you want to take that one since you're kind of in that position right now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it kind of talks about a lot of a lot of that is just has to do with what we said is reaching out to the community, putting out, I've, I'll put it this way. When I started the program here at Oakland, there was a solid month and a half before we started anything where I was just reaching out to people in the community in uh, Oakland County here, uh, Michigan, trying to find people who could run Smash Brothers events, people who could run Rocket League events, people who could run League of Legends events. Uh, it happened to be a lot easier because we have clubs on campus for each of those games that I had mentioned. Um, but it's not an impossible task to do if you're just a high school starting up your program. Ask your students about uh, what they're interested in and what they're able to do, what they have experience with. Uh, you'll find any Smash Brothers player has probably gone to a tournament if they're really serious about competing. If they've gone to a tournament, then they know a tournament organizer and they can connect you to one in the community. Uh, so it's it seems like a daunting task, but it's something that's definitely doable. You just have to get your hands dirty and really reach out to the students and be a little bit humbled that you need help with it. Yeah, I love that, be, be humbled. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I'll piggyback off that and saying like, directors and coaches can learn just as much from students as students learn from directors and coaches. Um, so the pathway is both ways um, and, you know, provide every resource you can uh, to, you know, let them learn and let them, you know, teach you as well. Um, but just a little advice yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We should have that up on a wall somewhere. Yeah. I can learn from you and you can learn from me. Um, I think it's a good reminder for, for all of us. Brandon, did you have anything that yeah. you wanted to add? Yeah, I just want to build on what Carl was saying. It was like, yeah, reach out to other other people in the community because oftentimes they'll be like really nice about it. They'll, they'll want to help you. Like they want to support. They want to see more people getting into these games, getting more people getting competing and being active in the community. And um, we didn't talk about it here, but I think we talked about it a little beforehand where Carl was like, a lot of people will actually like sometimes help you out to their detriment. Um, and they'll they'll be go out of their way to help you and like help you succeed because everyone just... Like we're all in this together. We're all trying to build the foundation here and um, like develop uh, the whole like esports scene in the high school and collegiate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, oh, oh, no, sorry. please go, Carl. Go continue. To, to take it a step further, find someone who's doing what you want to be doing and ask them for advice on it. 
like Brandon said, almost to their detriment, people in college and high school esports will help you even if it doesn't help them or it directly does not help them. <laughs> um, I, I found this out time and time again, especially I, I know collegiate the most, but in high school, it's the same way. There's a lot of uh, Discord servers out there for high school esports administrators trying to figure out what they want to do and just find an example of someone who's doing something you want to do very well and ask them advice on it. Uh, study up on it first so that they know you're committed. But as long as you're coming from a genuine spot and you just want to do what's best for the students, very few people in the space will turn you down. Um, if, if you want to specialize in broadcasting, reach out to Boise State University. If you want to reach out or I'm sorry, you want to focus on like competitive drive for collegiate esports, reach out to Maryville. Clerky will help you. So it's something that I've done personally and have been really surprised about how willing everyone is to just help you out when you have questions about it. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very supportive industry, um, which is something that, you know, has amazed me the, the six years I've been here. And I feel like we're kind of talking around it, um, but I think it's really important networking. And, you know, did each of you kind of build your networks on your own? And it, did that have any um, kind of advantage in terms of leading you to where your career is at now? Did your schools do anything to sort of help you build your networks? Because I think we're seeing, you know, the earlier you can possibly build your network, even if it is a high schooler, reaching out to a coach, you know, of a team that you aspire to, to potentially play on or a school that you'd like to go to someday is just going to continuously be beneficial to you. Um, and a lot of times, you know, it's talked about that you get a job through people, you know, not necessarily just by, you know, applying online and stuff anymore. So if you could each just um, really quickly kind of touch on what networking um, and how that played a role in your career. Yeah, I can go first. Um, the reason, whole reason I actually got like in contact with anyone at Boomer AVGL was through a mutual with a mutual <laughs> who found out someone at Boom was looking for high school students in the space. And so, and really how I met a lot of people is just literally just cold DM or I'll go on LinkedIn like, hey, just connect. And then like, we'll start talking about sports, esports and stuff. Or like, I'll go on Twitter like, hey, I really think it's cool what you're doing. This event was cool. Or like, hey, like, how'd you guys start this club? Stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, just be, be genuine, like, hey, like, I like talking to other people, uh, or I, I, I like talking about esports and, like, explaining uh, how I came here and or how other people came here. It's, it's cool talking about all of this stuff. And so, obviously, it would be really, really nice if um, my school was able to help me out with that. And I think, like, because of how willing people are to help, definitely, if you were just reach out, like, to, like, uh, other schools, they would be down to like come and do like speaker sessions like this at your school or like uh, open up their network to you. And so it, it's probably one of the most important parts parts, parts in the space is networking. You, it's really hard to get anywhere without knowing anyone. I yeah. agree with that. Oh, do you want Sorry. to go ahead? <laughs> uh, yeah. So I would say um, like resume building and networking is very important um, from a, you know, high school coach, director, college level, uh, creating positions that your students can be in that don't necessarily have to be like paid. They can honestly just be a title that they own in the club or um, program. Uh, you know, being the head of competitive esports, um, you know, that's a title that they can put on a resume um, to kind of help build their background. And um, I think, you know, using resources like LinkedIn um, and just following people on Twitter, that's honestly how I found my position with AVGL and Boom TV. Um, you know, I, I knew Victor uh, through AVGL. Um, I had conversations with him in the past while I was a student at the University of Tennessee. Um, and now look where I am now. I'm, you know, the uh, team lead for AVGL. So definitely networking and, and touching base with um, people in the space uh, is a huge um, part of, you know, finding a career in esports. So I'll, I'll tackle it more from the administrator standpoint, someone who's starting a program and wants to connect and network. Uh, if you're in the high school space, reach out to your local uh, group. So I, I know specifically Michigan very well because I'm, I'm here. Uh, it's called MICEF. It's just Michigan uh, High School Esports Federation. There's a group of a, a good amount of high school programs in there. They're all willing to help you out and all willing to connect. Um, and in fact, they'll be really excited that another school is joining and starting up a program. So um, I'm sure there's one for many, many states out there. If there's not, 
just reach out to a national level. You may even reach out to some collegiate ones because there's a lot more infrastructure there. Collegiate ones that you could refer to would be like NACE or NACAD uh, would both be good ones. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go to one of those conferences, sometimes they can be a bit costly, um, but joining in on events like this or other events that are maybe in person in the future, great ways to meet people and network. And that's really what you need to do to be able to uh, really start up your brand or your program and, and get the right resources that you need. Yes, definitely. So um, I think with this, we have about five minutes left. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up for some questions um, that you all have been uh, dropping in the chat. So I'm gonna hand it back to HB um, to give our panelists some of your questions. Great. Thanks so much, Sierra. And thanks so much, everyone, for that session. That was uh, really interesting, actually. I love to hear it from the student perspective. Um, and I think it's really cool that we're now at a point where, um, you know, students might have parents as gamers. Um, you know, and it's just a really neat thing. You know, um, I didn't have that growing up, except my dad is really good at Galaga. I, you know, he still plays that. But, um, but, you know, I didn't grow up in an environment where that was very normal and it's it's catching on. And so um, I'm a little jealous of you guys, but uh, very cool to be involved with it now. So um, one of the questions that we received in the chat was that uh, what are some of those important things coaches and directors can do to set up their students for success after they graduate? Let them volunteer. Uh, for your program, let, let them help run events. Uh, we've been touching on this over and over and over again, but it what it kind of depends on what area you're focusing on or what your specialty is. Uh, if it's broadcasting competitive events, then help them run the broadcast. Just invite people in as shoutcasters or broadcasters. Brandon can talk about this a lot, a lot more than I can specifically, but every college or high school program out there should have a wealth of volunteers in the area who are willing to come and help. If you give them that experience, then they're able to move up and up and up. I think high school and collegiate is a great pathway to professional esports. Um, there's a few examples of professional level casters out there right now that got started just casting collegiate events because they happen to be a student at the school um, and now they're professional casters. So uh, it's not specific to that, but those are the most famous people because they're public facing. I'm going to build on that as well. So even just to come back volunteer, just to mentor and teach younger students as well is pretty a, pr a pretty big one. Um, I've learned a lot myself from just teaching other people how to do broadcast stuff. Um, and they've taught me a lot as well that, hey, I, I, they brought in a pr fresh pr perspective that I didn't think about. And so you don't have to get them to do like an event. You can also just get them to, yep, a mentor and teach younger students. and. Um, like explain their pathway and like what they're doing now to younger students and get more people excited with the program. I'll also say um, in, in our Discord, the UTK Esports Discord, we have um, a, a channel for job opportunities. So anytime someone comes across a position, uh, you know, be it on Hitmarker or Twitter or LinkedIn, you know, they'll post in that channel um, and that goes out to the whole, you know, club student body. Um, and that can be a huge resource to anyone who's, um, you know, trying to find a foot in the esports space. And maybe I'm a little biased, but I want to know if uh, how much you're seeing journalism come into play. Are you finding that your local uh, reporters for the the school paper and stuff are covering these events, or are you seeing a lot of interest from them? I'll touch on this because uh, we actually um had you know the student um newspaper did actually uh, a couple of articles about us um and you know it's like two years ago now so i'm trying to <laughs> bring rem remind myself of uh, exactly how it went down but yeah um you know get in touch with your journalism um club uh or program on campus there's students probably within your club that are um within that department that want to do stories on the events that you're hosting or um, stuff that's going around so for us yes that did exist i know of um i, I can give an example that's not specifically my pro program here at oakland i know the uh there's a program out there in muskingum ohio muskingum university um and they've actually hired 
journalists, journalists and students to run weekly, uh, I guess, coverage is on their competitive matches. So again, I'm talking about the competitive scene here, but that's what I know the most. Uh, you can do that. That's the way to engage them. Or like Michael said, just reach out and see if they're able to, uh, if they're interested and if they are interested, then give them the story. Because that's a great way to break in. I'm just saying, um, you know, I, I don't have a college degree in journalism. I know a lot of people do, um, but I broke in because I was interested in it. And I just wrote about it because I wanted to. And um, so, you know, it, it matters just getting that hands-on experience and, and, you know, maybe interview a, the winner or the captain of the team or the coach or, you know, just sit in and be a fly on the wall and watch everything unfold, I think would be really great for journalist students, especially, you know, they may not even realize that's a career path. Um, and uh, and that, that's very cool. Um, not sure how much time we have left. There was, um, there was a comment actually from Matt. Uh, if you're starting a program, an industry level interest survey for a student body is a great tool. You'd be amazed at, at how many want to be shoutcasters or data analysts. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've seen, I've been through three college programs now personally, and every single time there's volunteers just coming out of the woodworks for shoutcasting for each game. Uh, for this year, we just added Overwatch. I was able to find five Overwatch casters within a month who are interested in coming in. Now, like Brandon said, they might not be incredibly talented with a ton of experience right off the bat. But that's kind of the value of your program is they get to sharpen their skill set and actually work on that. So that way, if they find out that that is something that they seriously want to do as a profession, they can work on it and get there through your program. So um, and, and not to say that they're bad, but it's just, you know, there's a difference between hiring them and having them as student body. But to me, the trade off there is worth it because you're giving them that experience. Yep, everyone starts somewhere, so they, they need somewhere to practice it, and what better place than in their own college? All right, All right. well, I think All we right. are at um, the end of our, our time today. Um, on behalf of Intel, AVGL, Boom TV, MSI, CDW, um, I really want to thank everybody for joining us today. Michael, Carl, Brandon, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. Um, I'm so happy we're able to include a talk like this and really give the student perspective back to everybody that's listening. And um, we hope to see you again tomorrow um, back on the, the platform. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your day or evening. Yes, and I would just like to add um, thank you to everyone who participated today. Um, come back tomorrow for more sessions. We have both college and K through 12. We've got, um, Stuff starting at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, from MSI, CDW, Intel, Microsoft. Um, and like someone said earlier, we have Minecraft tomorrow. If you're really interested in learning Minecraft uh, and using that as a framework for esports, we've got your back. So um, thanks again. Don't forget to use that networking button to, uh, to reach out and keep the conversation going. And we will see you tomorrow.